Hello educators, my name is David Farina and I'm a high school earth and space science teacher, planetarium and observatory director with over a decade of experience in the K-12 and college classroom. Throughout my years of experience, I have found that student engagement using traditional procedural cookbook laboratory methods and paper-based activities has diminished in dramatic ways. A growing number of digital devices stimulate today's students throughout their day. Teachers must compete with their students' attention as smartphones, smartwatches, and video games have become commonplace in our daily lives. In this video, I will introduce you to Simulation Curriculum's Starry Night Interactive Sky Simulator by teaching a lesson on a topic you are likely to teach in your classroom, the seasons. The seasons are a fundamental concept that is deceptively challenging for most students to understand. In fact, despite years of education on this topic, many students exit college and live their entire lives with deep-rooted misconceptions that are extremely difficult to break. Confronting these misconceptions through targeted lessons is required. Students must learn to uncover misconceptions for themselves through guided inquiry. In completing these guided inquiry-based lessons, students draw new connections and reestablish a new and correct mental model. By their very nature, interactive simulators allow students to explore their understanding of a concept while also keeping the model within the bounds of physics and reality. Starry Night provides just such a lesson. By the end of this video, you will be able to implement this handy guided inquiry lesson in your classroom. I like to start my students off with these lessons by providing them with limited background teaching. I find that a lab-first approach provides students with a hands-on experience right away and allows them to explore the concept in a more inquiry-based way. Throughout the lesson, I do my best to provide students with a vital supporting role in facilitating their learning by acting more as a coach rather than teaching through directed instruction. Each student is able to progress at their own pace, and I am able to provide and help with guidance to individual students in small groups. I suggest that all students participate in the lab's hands-on experience, but encourage small groups to join with each other to provide a layer of additional peer support. Groups work out the questions first and ask for help if they disagree or if they question the lab's instructions or results. Before I allow students to get started for the first time, I spend a few minutes going over the basics of using the Starry Night software and how to get the most out of the Starry Night guided learning experience. For this lesson, we will be accessing Unit A, Earth, Moon, and Sun. Next, we will click on the lesson A2, the year and the seasons. Each lesson starts with a guiding question and several key concepts. For this lesson, the year and the seasons, the guiding question is, what causes the seasonal changes on Earth? The major key concepts are, Earth's revolution around the sun defines the year, the tilt of the Earth's rotational axis governs the amount of solar radiation received in each hemisphere and thus causes the seasons. And the Southern Hemisphere seasons are reversed compared to those of the Northern Hemisphere. Before each lesson, I remind students of a few essential things. One, they must read everything on their screen's left-hand side and follow all directions as described in the procedure. Two, if they manipulate the model on the right-hand side of their screen in any way, they can simply return to the beginning of any section by clicking on the refresh button at the top left-hand side of the screen. Three, the forward and reverse arrows work just like a web page. Students can advance to the next question in the lesson or return to a previous question at any time by simply clicking these arrows. Introduction, the year and seasons. The first part of this lesson describes a massive misconception about the seasons related to the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Starry Night provides students with a model of the solar system showing the Earth's orbit is nearly circular. The small variations between the Earth's distance from the Sun are almost impossible to perceive throughout the year. Additionally, the misconception that the Earth's proximity from the Sun is the cause for the seasons is confronted once again by drawing attention to the fact that the seasons are dependent upon one's hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere's summer coincides with the Southern Hemisphere's winter, and vice versa. 
This information primes students' interest by creating a healthy level of cognitive dissonance between their current understanding of the seasons and the new knowledge that they're about to explore. Question 1. Earth's Orbit In this section, Starry Night instructs students to use the same model as shown in the introduction. This time, students use the time and date function to stop time at various locations along the Earth's orbit. One crucial function of Starry Night measures the distance between objects using the Angular Separation tool. Students can access this tool by clicking on the menu bar at the top left-hand part of their screen. A line appears between the objects, and the distance information appears in the heads-up display. Depending on the group and individuals in the classroom, modeling of scientific processes may be required to provide scaffolding for students. I suggest that at this point in the lesson, you actively monitor student progress and provide assistance in coming up with a systematic way of taking measurements throughout the year. For example, suggest to students that they could take data on the same day each month for all 12 months of the year. Additionally, instructors may suggest using a data table to organize this information into a more informative piece of evidence supported by data. Always highlight the importance of backing their findings with evidence. That additional step in the learning process shows students the value of removing bias and misconceptions from our understanding of nature. These ethical principles are a central pillar of science and are an often overlooked aspect of the scientific inquiry process. Allow the data to speak for itself. Students should notice an exciting relationship between the date and the sun's distance. The Earth is closest to the sun during Northern Hemisphere's winter, and farthest during the Northern Hemisphere's summer. These data challenge the misconception that the Earth's proximity to the sun causes the seasons. This helps to further erode the prior mental model that students enter the classroom with. Question 2. Days of Winter In this next scene, we see the sunrise over New York City on December 21st, the Northern Hemisphere's winter solstice, and the shortest day of the year. Starry Night prompts students to record the time of sunrise and sunset as time moves forward. In addition to the sunrise and sunset times, students measure the sun's highest altitude in the sky. An important line has been drawn on the sky to help with this measurement, known as the local meridian. The local meridian is the line that passes from the northern point on the horizon through the zenith point directly over your head and back down to the southern point on the horizon. Along this line, Starry Night provides a scale of angular degrees above the horizon to measure the height of objects in the sky. For this lesson, we want to highlight the importance of the sun's highest point in the sky or salving point, which coincides with the sun's passing through the local meridian. An additional helpful hint during this part of the lesson is for students to zoom in when taking measurements as Starry Night's values are more easily determined when using magnification, much like they would be in real-world settings. Under magnification, fine calibration of the sun's position can be achieved by selecting and changing the minutes and seconds on the time and date controls. Also keep in mind that by mousing over or clicking on the sun, you can activate the HUD, or information pane, displaying the sun's current properties, including altitude values that match those as seen on the local meridian line. Before we move forward into the next question, another interesting observation you could ask students to make would be to record the cardinal direction that the sun rises and sets in. Most students are familiar with the fact that the sun rises in the east, and sets in the west, but in reality, that is only true on two days a year. For the rest of the year, the sunrise and set locations along the horizon vary throughout the seasons, as we will see in our next segment of this lesson. Question 3. Days of Summer Once again, Starry Night prompts students to record the time for sunrise and sunset over New York City. For this question, the date has progressed to June 21st, the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. Again, I feel it is important to ask students to record the cardinal direction that the sun rises and sets in, and record the sun's altitude using the zoom in method described in question two. Students should compare data they collect in question three, the summer solstice, with the data they collected from question two, the winter solstice. Students should notice the difference between the times of sunrise and sunset. 
encouraged students to determine the total time that the sun was in the sky for each season. Question 4. The seasons come and go. In this model, students now have the vantage point of seeing the Earth and Sun from an enormous distance. The Earth's size has increased to provide students with an easy-to-see model that is otherwise scientifically accurate. The view is oriented to be on the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The Earth's equator, shown in red, provides students with the ability to distinguish between the northern and southern hemispheres of Earth. The North and South Poles are displayed to allow students to monitor the Earth's axis orientation throughout the year. From this data, students conclude that the position and tilt of Earth's axis always points in one direction. The tilt results in the sun's light to shine more directly on a particular hemisphere during some points along Earth's orbit, while being less direct during other locations along the orbit. Question 5. Summer or Winter? The next simulation provides students with a view of the Earth and Sun during June 21st, the summer solstice. Starry Night asks students to compare the amount of sunlight shining on the Earth's surface between two continents, North America and South America. These continents, located respectively in the northern and southern hemispheres of Earth, receive different intensity sunlight due to the Earth's curvature and axial tilt. In this model, students will identify that the Northern Hemisphere tilts towards the Sun. As a result, North America receives drastically more sunlight than South America on June 21st. Question 6. Winter or Summer? The final scene moves time forward by six months and repeats the same questions. This time, students will identify that the Northern Hemisphere tilts away from the Sun. Therefore, the continent of North America receives drastically less sunlight than South America on December 21st. The final result is that students will identify the relationship between the Earth's axis being tilted either toward or away from the sun is the cause for the seasons. Question 7. Extra credit. In the final simulation of A2, Students manipulate the simulation on their own by producing a result that shows the first day of spring or fall. If students understand the seasons concept, there is a quick check for understanding that you can employ. Students correctly simulate the Earth directly in front of the sun or directly behind it. Students will determine that the sun's direct rays shine on the equator. If they figure this out, they have understood the concept of the seasons. As a result, I firmly believe that this particular question lends itself well to an exit ticket for determining student understanding. The next question shows a simulation of Mars in orbit around the Sun. This scenario may very well be the first time that students have considered the potential for seasons on another planet, and the concepts that result in the seasons on Mars are the same as here on Earth. Next, Starry Night provides students with their first exposure to the analemma concept representing the shape of the sun's path as it travels through the sky throughout the year. For this question, I hold a brief discussion with students. I ask students to measure the angular distance of the analemma from top to bottom. It should be equal to 47 degrees. Ask students why that number is significant. Give them some time to answer here and encourage them to consider what they already know about the Earth-Sun relationship and the tilt of Earth's axis. Eventually, through persistent questioning, some students may come to connect the dots. When the Earth's northern axis tilts 23 and a half degrees towards the Sun, its northern hemisphere's summer. The Sun appears at the top of the analemma. When the Earth's southern axis tilts 23 and a half degrees towards the Sun, its northern hemisphere's winter, and the Sun appears at the bottom of the analemma ask students to stop the advance of time by using the time menu. Ask students to simulate these two sun positions at both June 21st and December 21st to confirm this relationship. Ask students to predict the location of the autumnal and vernal equinoxes. Most students will hypothesize the crossing point of the two loops of the analemma is the equinox point. Interestingly, this is not the case. In fact, under closer inspection, students will notice that the crossing of the two loops is actually above the sun's location on the equinoxes while moving time forward. Furthermore, both loops are not the same size, and these loops are directly related to the non-circular, elliptical shape of Earth's orbit. 
The smaller top loop is related to the fact that the Earth's aphelion, or farthest distance from the Sun, causes the Sun to appear to be moving more slowly throughout the sky, and therefore it does not traverse as great of an angular distance each day. Earth's farthest distance from the Sun is on July 4th through 6th each year, Northern Hemisphere's summer. It's essential to reference the analemma at each of these dates. The larger loop at the bottom is caused by the Sun's moving more rapidly in angular distance across the sky, as the Earth-Sun distance decreases as we move towards Northern Hemisphere winter, which coincides with the timing of Earth's perihelion, the closest proximity to the Sun, on January 2nd through 4th. Encourage students to go further through exploration. Students will likely start to question if other planets have seasons and may even ask you directly. Far too often, we as educators do our best to try to answer student questions with the best possible answer. Unfortunately, although we have piqued the student's interest momentarily, our answer has resulted in solutions, but not always new questions. I have an alternative way to approach student questions while working within Starry Night. This has resulted in some of the best learning outcomes in my students over the last decade. When my students ask me questions like this, I generally don't answer them directly. Instead, I encourage them to leverage their newfound ability to operate Starry Night software and find out for themselves. I often give learners a simulation challenge and provide them with a basic idea of what they need to simulate to answer their questions. Asking students to use the software to discover new things provides an excellent opportunity to explore and requires higher order thinking and learning. The answers to their investigation into the seasons will likely result in more questions. Their ability to use Starry Night as their own personal universe to manipulate and measure is by definition the pinnacle of the scientific inquiry process. As I stated earlier, Seasons are a deceptively complex task for many to explain, but when learned via Starry Night, the concepts are much more concrete. Consider holding a follow-up discussion with students after this lesson and reiterate the concepts. Allow them to explain to you and to each other in their own words, and draw diagrams with labels of the various seasons. I would consider throwing in some additional vocabulary like summer and winter solstice and stress the SOL in solstice means soul our sun. Also, use the words vernal and autumnal equinox with students. Use Socratic questioning methods and relate the equinoxes and their relationships with Earth's equator. Throughout my career, I have used Starry Night software in both planetarium and classroom laboratory experiences to enhance my teaching with easy-to-use, scientifically accurate, interactive simulations of the night sky. Starry Night includes teacher resources that provide flexible instruction that enables learners to explore through hands-on activities that encourage questioning, experimentation, and exploration. If you're interested in learning more about this software, consider clicking the link in the description below and visit starrynighteducation.com and sign up for the simulation curriculum mailing list. If you'd like to get hands-on experience, click Contact Us to sign up for a live webinar with the Starry Night Education team. By signing up and attending a webinar, the Starry Night Education team will provide you with the opportunity to gain first-hand experience with this amazing software and start you with your 30-day free trial of Starry Night software. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell at the bottom of your screen to get notified each time we post a new video. On behalf of Simulation Curriculum, I'm Dave Farina. Keep looking up.